Did you know that tennis players ranked between 400 and 450 in the world make as much as a McDonald's worker? And that 76% of the players ranked in the ATP rankings make less than 20K a year? What's up everyone? Karu here from My Tennis HQ. Hope you guys are doing great today. Um, and in this video, we're gonna talk about money. Okay, so if there's one thing uh, this COVID-19 break has highlighted is the income inequality in tennis. A lot of people think that tennis players can just ride this out because they'll see in the news, Forbes just came out with the highest paid athletes in the world and both male and female were tennis players. Uh, so there's a misconception that all of us make a ton of money and that's just not the reality. Only a handful of us is, are in this privileged position that they can just wait and they still have you know, other sources of income during this time. But for most players, prize money is the main source of income. And during this time, obviously no one's making any money. And I know how that feels because I played professional tennis for a couple years and I did well. I went from pretty much unranked to, to top 400 in the world in about six months. I won three futures, I was winning a lot of matches, but even then, I didn't have the money to, to stay out there as much as I wanted. I had to coach on the side to make some extra money. You know, it's, I didn't have a coach. You know, I was just kind of like grinding it out, and that's the reality for most of us. And at the end of the day, it's a very unequal sport, and I think it's important for us to break down uh, the numbers so people understand a little bit better uh, what it's like to actually, actually play professional tennis. So a few weeks ago, the co-founder of My Tennis HQ, Guy Hadlich, wrote a fantastic article on players' prize money earnings. Uh, he researched their earnings from years 2015 to 2019 and came up with some averages and the numbers are incredible. Uh, I'm gonna link it down below. You can check it out after um, you watch this video. I highly recommend it. You can take a, take a slower look um, at actually all the numbers and they're staggering. So before we get to the numbers, uh, I just wanna clear that this is only prize money earnings. That's There's no um, you know playing extra club matches, there's no endorsements, nothing like that. This is straight prize money earnings uh, from tennis players. So here's, here's some of the, the numbers that really stood out for me. So number one, out of all tennis players ranked in the ATP Tour ranking, only 13 percent so 195 players make more than 100k a year five percent so 69 players make more than 50k a year eight percent so 124 players make more than 20k a year so what that means is that 76 percent of the players ranked in the atp rankings make less than twenty thousand dollars a year and that's excluding taxes and expenses. That's just the figure you see if you go on the website, on the ATP website. So number two, on average, top five players make close to $8 million a year in prize money. Players ranked between 50 and 100 make, on average again, $500,000 a year, which is, which is a lot. But players ranked between 500 and 1,000 in the world make on average $7,000 a year in prize money. So here's a chart that I took from our article so you can take a closer look at prize money distribution between players at all different rankings. So when we take a look at the numbers, they can be a little bit deceiving. What I mean by that is that when we look at the table again from our, from our article, uh, we'll see that on average, actually 250 over 250 players make over sixty thousand dollars a year sixty thousand dollars a year when you think about it is is a good salary you know for most people they make they make that kind of money a year but tennis players obviously are in a, such a unique position right we have to pay for traveling we have to pay for coaches we have to pay for a lot of things so sixty thousand dollars a year completely gone after a year of playing. You're not gonna save any of that money. You're paying taxes, you're paying your coach, uh, if, you, if you're able to afford a coach, 
um, you're paying for travel again if you don't have any sponsors and all that kind of stuff in any other sport even if you're making only sixty thousand dollars a year think of think about soccer and football and basketball whatever if you're only making sixty thousand dollars a year um, you're still traveling with the team um, you have all the resources you need um, from a team so you're not spending any money to actually get better at your sport so when we look at players average prize money income at different ranking levels we can draw comparison to just normal jobs and there's a couple that i want to highlight and show it to you um, so like i said before top five players make on average eight million dollars give or take a year and that's the same as the ceo of Ch chipotle when we go down to players ranked 100 to 120 in the world they make on average three hundred thousand dollars a year um, that's kind of similar to a high paid doctor or a high paid lawyer something along those lines where players ranked between 200 and 233 in the world they make on average eighty eight thousand dollars a year and that's the same amount as a physician's assistant uh, makes yearly moving down the rankings again players ranked between 300 and 350 in the world make around thirty thousand dollars a year on average and that's the same as a book bookkeeper players ranked between 400 and 450 in the world make around seventeen thousand dollars a year and that's the same as a mcdonald's crew worker and then uh, once you move below 600 everyone's 600 and below in the atp rankings makes less than minimum wage in the united states so where does all this inequality come from and in short is just how uneven uh, prize money distribution is right there's a lot of money at the top um, but that money doesn't necessarily trickle down uh, to the lower level so if we take a look at this this table here we'll see how uneven the distribution is uh, for example a challenger uh, 125 challenger winner makes $21,000 compared to an ATP 250 winner that makes on average um, $100,000 to win the tournament. But if, if you talk to any players, any, any player that plays professionally, they'll tell you winning an AT, uh, a challenger 125, winning honestly any challenger, it's incredibly hard. And you're making here in a challenger 80, uh, only 7,000 for the, for the winner. There are men's opens. Uh, that pay more than that in America uh, when it comes to futures uh, look at that you to win a future 25k uh, that rarely anyone wins more than two a year um, you're only making three thousand and six hundred dollars yeah that's a good week but you're not gonna win every week um, it's really hard to do that and what what ends up happening is um, again um, there's too much uh, at the top and they keep adding to the top um, but the bottom like really suffers so you know this COVID again this COVID-19 break has really highlighted that right so a, a crazy stat here is that the winner of the US Open makes 1,782 times more than the winner of a 15k uh, challenge uh, future <laughs> which is pretty crazy but again uh, I'm not saying that everyone needs to be to get paid a million dollars a year not at all I don't think I've said this before I don't think getting to top 400 um, is necessarily the hardest thing in the world uh, I think players with enough quality will make it there but when you look at it you are in the top of your profession no matter what you say if there's less people watching whatever it is that's a whole different topic but um, you are in the top of your profession and you're only making peanuts <laughs> and not really making because um, you're actually losing money to have to travel and all that stuff. So when that's really discouraging uh, for a lot of players to be to actually go out and, and play professionally, uh, because, again, it's really hard to, to make a living. I'm not saying to become a millionaire. I'm not saying to retire at 30. I'm saying to actually just make a living out of tennis. Now, after watching this video and learning all this information, should you feel discouraged about pursuing a professional tennis career? Absolutely not. Uh, tennis is much more 
than just making money. Um, when I look at my career, not just as a professional, but you know, from a junior perspective, the places I went, the people I met um, as a junior, uh, the experiences I had playing Grand Slams and all this stuff, and you know, as a professional, uh, I also you know achieve, achieved you know my own uh, success. Uh, it might not be the definition of success that everyone has, but I enjoyed. I not just enjoyed, but I loved my time um, on the tour. I really, I really liked playing. And the biggest thing, I earned a two hundred thousand dollar education for free um, at one of the greatest. Well, I'm gonna say the greatest university. Uh, in the world <laughs> uh, at UCLA and I met I think probably my best friends in the world uh, during the time I have kind of my community there so tennis has given me way more uh, than just you know finding financial compensation and I think um, that's what makes uh, tennis a great sport so there you have it guys this is the actual truth about how much money um, tennis players make I know it can be kind of like a a dark almost dark um, subject but it is um, what we, we are dealing with and I think it's important for us to talk about it so now I want to hear from you guys let us know in the comments below what you think about uh, this problem we have in prize money distribution in tennis today and maybe some of the solutions uh, you might think of uh, that could help us grow the sport and if you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up. It really helps us grow the channel. And I know a lot of people who are watching our content aren't subscribed to the channel yet, so please give it a subscribe. And visit mytennishu.com. Again, we have a, a lot of articles there that I think you guys are gonna enjoy, including uh, this one that we talked about today. And I'll see you guys on the next one.